Hello, welcome to another episode of Aaron Plays. This will be doing turn six of my Storming the Gap Scenario 8 playthrough. Myself playing the Soviets, the AI controlled by the solo assistant playing the West Germans. Um, this is an eight turn scenario, so I have three turns still to capture two objectives, being objective A and objective B. Okay. Um, go straight in, bring up the turn chart, and turn six, still got three modules of artillery, which I've not been able to use. Draw on the first card. It's the Germans, which instantly puts this back into the deck and they will get the HQ. I'll put it on the map. They'll get to apply that to one of their units. In a moment. Okay, going through the turn sequence. So they have command status. Okay, now I was asked a question what I thought about the solar system not giving it any direction on where the HQs of the um, solo side, uh, the solo assisted side, should go. Um, I've been putting it on the most powerful unit in this case. Um, I can't see any reason why I wouldn't keep it with the Leopard. So here's doing so. Missile reload. They've got to check for the reloading of these missiles at the rear. Morale check, morale seven. No, nope. they failed. So. If missile reload attempt fails, leave the missile ammo reloading marker on the unit because it's an, it's marked as an infantry support weapon. Okay. Next up, disruption removal. So the Leopard 2 has got a morale of 7, the HQ mates 8. 8 and below, that tank is back in business. It's not. That's a reprieve. Okay, that has definitely brought a smile to my face. Okay, that's very good. Um, disruption removal. Any others? No. Offboard artillery strikes. Right, they have got an HQ, not affected by. Um, Electronic warfare. So they can bring an artillery strike down. They have got the some more minefields if they wish to place it. Um I can't see any reason why they wouldn't try to. I mean, I've got a unit that can cross this river here. Because the BMPs are amphibious, as denoted by the blue green um movement value of six. It takes a whole turn, but they can cross. Um, so let's see if they place their mines over this area. So I will bring up a fire for effect marker. Actually, no, I've got to check to see if they do fire. OK, so I need to draw a card. Um, card 25. And it's got to have somewhere in the priority, either on board or in off board, the indirect fire, and it does. It is on board indirect fire, but for the case of determining off board artillery, on board or in board, written there is good enough. So they will be bringing on. Um, so I need the fire for effect counter. Um, let's place it there. Okay, anything but a six and it's accurate. It is accurate. So they will now place could even place it in my hex there if they so wish. So what the first one's got to go where the fire effect mark was. The next one 
could be in J, well, why not? Let's put it in J9, let's, let's, let's punish me. Okay, one goes there, uh, the other one, let's place it there. Okay, so the J9 effect, let me pause at that point. Okay, artillery delivered mines are, I will check. A one to three, no effect on my unit. Four, five, I'll take a step. Six, I will take two steps. No effect, but it's still in, in there. Okay. Remove the fire for effect. Um, Okay, that's uh, the uh, off board artillery done. Um, and that will be the last shot of the artillery delivered mines. So I'll delete that. There, no more off board artillery. Okie dokie. All right, we are now into the action phase. So. We had no command, everyone was in command control. So let's see what this, well, the leopard is disrupted. So let's see what it will do. I'm drawing AEO order number two and priority red because it has got enemies within one hex. It says if disrupted LRM, well, they can't move anywhere. Um, without going into a, that losing line of sight. It then says fire, well, they can't fire because they're disrupted. And go onto the yellow, it says fire, which they still can't do. It then says move, so they will move. So where will they move to and how do disrupted units move? Okay, reading the disruption rules, it looks like as they are adjacent to an enemy unit, they cannot move. So it looks like they are doing nothing. All right. On to the Marder in L10. Okay, again, it's got um, enemy in point blank range. So I'm looking at card number 29. Um, and its priority order, first off, is fire, and it can fire at the infantry adjacent to them. Um, it cannot fire on the BMP behind them um, due to being too close with a Marder's anti-tank guided missile. So we'll have it fire on my infantry in M10. So it's got two at five, but because it's point blank, that will modify that to two at four. Two dice requiring fours. That is one hit. My unit in there, um, it's in soft cover. It'll get one dice at five. Ignores the hit. The marder is marked ops complete. Okay, now to the infantry. Drawing a card. Their card draw is number 34. Um, the missiles are out of ammunition at the present moment, or currently reloading, relocating, whichever way you want to look at it. Um, so they don't have anyone within, well, it's not point blank range because it's three hexes is the closest. So it's first option, it says onboard indirect fire. No, it says fire. Okay, so the infantry uh, have their, that 225 on the left-hand side, showing that they do have some form of anti-tank capability. Out to two hex range. Um, would be normal. So firing at that BMP, which is the closest target, 
that will be um, extended range or long range, whatever the verbiage is for this system. Um, so that will change it from two at five to two at six to hit the BNP. They scored a hit. The PNP's got no cover. However, he uh, so he can't claim concealment because he's not in any concealment terrain. So he's just got the one at five to save, which he does not. So he is marked disrupted. And the infantry are marked false complete. Okay, that is the AI's turn. Our activation completed. On to the next card draw. That's the first end of operations. I think it is. Let's double check. Yeah. Next card drawn. Electronic warfare. Okay. Um, I need a four, five, or six effectively to be able to place this on the West German HQ. I can. So now they're affected by electronic warfare as well. Okay, next card, the Germans activate again. So removing the admin markers. Okay, following the sequence of play, that was the refresh step, command status. So the back end of command restrictions. So determining L10 and morale being seven, they get to uh, behave as they wish, and J6, so do they. Um, and the HQ doesn't need to roll. Missile reload, J6, they do reload. Oh dear. And we'll land the back on, on, on track. Um, disruption removal. Morale of the Leopard is seven. They need an eight with the HQ. Yes. Okay. Need that. Right, so everyone's in command control and everyone's got missiles. Offboard artillery, they no longer have any actions. Okay. Um, I will start with the Leopard. The card drawn is card 20. It's red priority. It says assault if firepower is greater than targets. Okay. What could be the target? The nearest target is my infantry. Definitely doesn't have a firepower equal to or greater than that. Uh, another potential target is my unit in J, right, that is J9. So it could assault there. Its firepower would be one at four, I'll be one at six. I don't see it assaulting there. Uh, it says if firepower is greater than target. It is a little bit. Would that put it in a better position? They wouldn't go into their own minefields. No, okay, that, that, everything else out of line of sight. Okay, that now makes sense. Um, minefield hadn't been there, then I think, yes, I'd follow the card, but the minefield is there. Again, not mentioned on the card, nothing like that is covered. So another judgment call for myself, judgment call is, they're not going to go onto their own mind. If they knew where those mines were going to land exactly, then probably would. So if it was a, a set out minefield, which they'd known know where everything is, then yes, they, they would do it. But a random minefield, they take the same risk as my guys. So that would mean that they now fire. Which target is more of a threat to them? My disrupted BMB or my keen to get in amongst them infantry, which has hurt them so far. I think it would be my infantry. So looking at the weapon there, it's HE size, so it's the 725. 
they're rolling two dice requiring fives to hit but the point blank range makes that fours to hit and the h is given to number so it's three dice at five on three dice at four because it's point blank no hits oh i got lucky they're all complete Marder. Drawing a card for them. I've drawn card 16. Okay. It's got any priority, so it says fire at any player unit. Okay. Um, it can't affect the BMP behind them. I too close for the um, anti-tank guided weapon. So they will fire on my infantry. Two dice at five, which becomes two dice at four, was a point blank. A hit. I will save on one dice on five for the cover of the woods. No. So I become disrupted. Okay. He becomes completed. And then the third card, this is for the infantry in J6. It says assault if firepower greater than target. Well, it can't even get to them because there's a river in the way. So this next option on, on the um, priority red would be fire. So the three hexes, so within range. So it's rolling four dice at four. In fact, it's at point blank range because the range is seven. Less than that's only three. So it's going to be rolling four dice at three on the BMP. I look, wait. Two hits. I get one save, meaning a five. No. Two hits. I'm already disrupted. That eliminates. So that was. A bad move by me moving into that hex, hoping to get across before the man's fired again. And rolling for ammo. There we go. Looking for more ammo again, reloading missiles. Okie dokie. I don't believe I just said okie dokie. <laughs> and then mark tops complete. Okie dokie. Oh, I'll show my age now. Um, ops complete. So. Next up. That's end of operations. That is the second end of operations card. Double check. Yep. So I didn't get to operate this time. Okay, so we need to keep an end of operations card out. That'll be the end of turn six. So let's remove fleet all admin. Uh, rolling for electronic warfare. So rolling for them first, seven. Yes, there's reducing a mine. No. That one point morale difference is starting to kill me now. I'm not getting any artillery in, I do feel I need it. Um, we cleared up the map. Okay, moving the turn marker on a turn, so I'm down to two turns. Um, running out of time. Um, and the EW, well, I know I'll be definitely getting a turn seven because my HQ, I will remove, stick it on the end of operations card. And there it is. Um, yeah. Two turns to go. Um, I'm down to four effective units. They're now at three. They've got EW reducing. It doesn't seem to be affecting it. Seven morale and six morale. The difference being on a seven morale, you're a 56% chance of passing on a six you're only a 42% chance of passing it. Um, 
that doesn't sound a lot until you're rolling the dice and it, it, it is significant. Um, and it applies to everything, the missile reloading, um, obviously morale checks to remove disruption, and now for this electronic warfare. And I haven't had a chance at all um, to fire any of my HE. And pretty much every turn I have been moving or assaulting out of um, with the out of command units. Um, a great limiter indeed. Especially when there's only one formation that you can place the EW on. I think with multiple formations, there may be. I, I'm leaning towards that this is swinging the scenario a little bit too much against the Soviets. But that's just me as a player whinging, probably. Um, as I say, I'm going to be playing this scenario from the German point of view um, after I've completed this, see how the Soviets do with the AI, um, and see how they cope with the electronic warfare uh, and the six morale. So anyway, well, thank you for watching. Um, please like and subscribe if you're at all interested. Um, and well, if you've got this far, hopefully you are still interested and you've already liked and subscribed, but continue to do so. Let other players know or other play people know. Spread the words. Um, I'm enjoying doing these videos and getting the response back. It's a good way for me to actually relearn the system. Um, I found it quite useful. Um, so until the next time, all the best. Bye bye.